ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. All of the vessels down this side of the marina are available for charter. And uh, at this time of the year and with this regatta, you'll pay between $1,000 and $5,000 a day for a boat. But if you come back in July and August, that's the middle of our winter, you'll get a weekend for 50 bucks, huh? Not a problem. If you watch it on television or you listen to the commentary, the vessel North Star there is the television boat. There are 11 cameras situated around the course, not counting the ones that are on the actual race yachts themselves. And they all send their pictures back to the editor on board there, and he decides which picture we will see. The boat itself is owned by a guy called Bill North, who lives in America, and he's the owner of North Sales. He supplied about 40% of the sales for the American company. From here on up, all of these boats on this side of the marina pay $2,000 a week for their moorings. That includes electricity, sewerage, security, and water. Directly behind them, they pay $5,800 a week, and down in the corner where the big boats are, they pay $9,600. Very, very reasonable by overseas standards. If you could find facilities like this, and there are none, I know I've been on a few, but anything approaching these around the world in the more popular spots, you'll pay between ten and fifteen thousand US dollars a week to park your boat. When these were completed in 1998, they advertised them around the world, and the part of the deal of getting one was that you had to put up a forty thousand dollar US bond, and they were advertised worldwide for three days. Ninety-six percent of them were sold or leased; they were gone. Bang. I could not believe how cheap they are. The floating restaurant you see here, officially known as the American Express uh, Yacht Club, started life as a canteen on an oil drilling rig in the North Sea off the coast of England. It was dismantled and sold for scrap to Singapore and somebody there uh, saw it and built uh, the restaurant you see there and it was towed down here from Singapore. And it's open only to members of the American Express Club. But members of the public on Sunday, members of the public are allowed in there and there's a surcharge of $20 per person. This dark blue hull vessel here, the Spirit of Fitzroy, is the only New Zealand yacht moored on this side of the basin. She's on her maiden voyage. She was built down in New Zealand. She is a New Zealand design boat. And she's a beautiful example of uh, that industry. And she's valued at around about 1.7 million New Zealand dollars. Take a look at this little boat next to her. It's called Ulysses. We talk a little bit quietly because the owner is uh, on board and he's not probably asleep. Big day for him tomorrow. Um, it's, it's nothing special about it. I mean, you'll see hundreds like that boat, just like her around the world and around the coast of New Zealand. But she is a little bit special. I call it the fastest boat in the marina. And I'll explain that to you later on. As you're walking around, you'll see that a lot of these boats have got the word Georgetown CI on their stern. <coughs> Tell me a bit about the boat. It's most probably corporately owned. It will be registered as the head office of the company that owns it. And they register that head office to Georgetown, which is port of entry for the Cayman Islands, because that's a tax haven. Hamilton and the Bermudas is another one. As is Roadtown, port of entry for the Virgin Islands. That's also a tax haven. But one thing they all have in common from their starboard or right-hand corner, me, just below the main spreader, you'll notice they all fly the flag of New Zealand. It's a tradition among seafarers when you enter a foreign port, as a mark of courtesy and respect, you fly that nation's flag. It dates back to the early 15th century when all of the major ports around the world were guarded by gun emplacements. And the only way you could tell the gunners you were friendly was to fly this country's flag. Marine Shah 3 here, this big white lady we're just opposite, was designed and built by Sensation Yachts up in Henderson, about uh, 12 miles north of Auckland. 
she took line honours and set a new uh, world record when she won the 1999 Sydney to Hobart race in Australia. High period, one next door, designed by Jim Clark, who is the founder of Netscape, the internet provider. Georgia next door was built uh, just around the corner here at uh, West Haven. She's the biggest sloop in the world. She's owned by a property magnate uh, from the States, and these two guys have a bit of a grudge thing going, right? Whenever their boats meet, they have a match race between the two. And uh, I understand they're doing that this week. The wager is 100,000 US dollars, and it goes to the loser's choice of charity, not the winner. Uh, she's a relatively new one, Georgia. And these two guys, as I say, they are business rivals and they have this uh, sort of almost friendly relationship, shall we say. <laughs> when, he had the, when the owner of Georgia had her built, he said to the architect, I want a super yacht, I don't care what it is, but it's got to be bigger than Hyperion. And she is 400 millimetres bigger than Hyperion. <laughs> when she arrived in the berth alongside of Hyperion, I understand that Jim Clark rang his boat builder and said, I need a new yacht and it's got to be bigger than Georgia. And they've just drawn the lines on it. And I was talking to one of the crewmen and uh, Jim Clark's new boat is 150 millimetres longer than Georgia. <laughs> and this is the game they play with each other all the time. They've got that much money, they don't know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Regal Flyer over here is owned by the Corbin factory, uh, the Corman family in Auckland. Um, originally from Israel, and they're world famous winemakers. The green one down in the corner, the Wave Crusher, is a New Zealand designed boat built uh, about 12 miles down the coast at a place called Pine Haven. The green one is owned by Air New Zealand. The big blue one here, Australia, had exactly the same boat, it's just bigger overall. He's owned by an Auckland car dealer, um, Jerry Clayton knows that. The blue one's valued at about $11 million, the green one at about $3 million. These two boats here are sister ships. They're both 175 feet long and their masts are 176 feet tall. To put that into perspective for you, neither of them can fit under the Auckland Harbour Street at their blood tide. The one on this end is owned by the DeVos family co-founders of Amway. <laughs> the, white money, the most beautiful lady in the place is this gorgeous old triple master in here. She's called the Shenandoah. She comes from New York. She's 100% pure natural recyclable wood. The deck is teak and the rest of it is mahogany. The mast and the boom is made of spruce and they are hollow. Uh, she spent about 20 years of her life on a mud bank off the coast of Guernsey. The Frenchman found her buried in the mud and salvaged her. He obtained a copy of the original plans and had her faithfully restored. Her only concession to the 20th century is the radar and the satellite communication disks up there on the uh, rear mast and a couple of VHF aerials up there. She was born in 1903 and uh, they still raise the sails the same way now as they did then. By hand, you haul them up one at a time. I can't tell you much about Affinity. I have been told that it's owned by Tom Cruise, the actor, but I don't know if that's true or not. I task of the big blue and white one next to all started life uh, as an ocean-going salvage tug back in the 1970s. I understand she's now owned by a retired Secretary of State of America, and he's just spent $22 million on her up at Guam Ray, having her completely renovated. I tell you, amongst all these super yachts, out of all of them, there are only two where the owner's skipper live aboard. 
Shenandoah is one of them. The other one is up a little bit further, and I'll point it out to you. This year we're getting 163 tourist liners coming in. We had uh, QE2 in here a couple of weeks ago. budget of 62 million US dollars to take the cuts back to Italy. They're financed <coughs> pardon me, by the House of Prada, which is a um, high fashion women's clothing designer in Italy. The 
your advertising budget for the House of Prouders, $56 million a year. Your old record is saying we don't care what it costs, we want the America's Cup. Your brand name is Luna Rosa, and that's the name you see on the stern of both their vessels. The one that they are racing in the finals is the one that is in the shed. They broke the mast racing a couple of weeks ago, it cost them $453,000 US dollars. Not the least bit concerned, they've got six more, uh, sorry, five more in the shed, and I understand there's three more waiting in Italy, should they be needed. But the whole thing is owned by one man, Mr. Patrizio Bertelli. And he said to his staff, he'd heard about the Auckland Regatta every, uh, the last weekend in January in Auckland, every year we have a big sailing regatta, and it's a very, very popular event. And you'll get four or five thousand yachts out there in the harbour. And he said that he wanted to sail his boat in it. So they said, all right, boss, which one do you want? He said, no, no, I want to sail my boat. So they took the mast off it, and they put the mast and the yacht in the hold of a 747 and flew it down to Auckland Sea Motor Company. the next day is a lay day when no, there is no racing and that's when the wind comes piping through at about 20 knots. And the next day is a race day and there's no wind. So we're uh, here. Yeah. This is an amazing boat. Peter Blake is the president of the Cousteau Society. And uh, when this regatta is over, he's taking that boat down to the South Pole. Its bows are 150 millimetre thick aluminium. It's a nice breaker. The hull is electrically heated to provide a constant 18 degrees Celsius inside. All of the standing rigging, the mast, the booms, the stays, are all electrically heated so the ice can't form on them. It's powered by sail, diesel or electric motors. It's got specially designed propellers that chop the ice up. When the ice gets too thick for it to uh, go through anymore, it doesn't have a keel. It's got two centre boards. And they raise the centre boards up and a little sled drops down underneath it and they power up onto the top of the ice floe and they put the keels back down again and raise the sails and they can go off sailing across the top of the ice. Quite an incredible boat. Quite incredible. The biggest boat? Uh, no, there is a boat, not, she's not in there today, but uh, there's a boat there called Double Haven. It is big, like it's, it's twice the size of that thing that's got the helicopter on it. Twice the size of that. There was a parking there in the white one. 
Yeah, I'm right over in the corner. It's not in tonight, it's gone out. It's away tonight. But it's owned by Ted Turner of CNN News. I understand it cost him 86 million US dollars to put it in the water. Got a crew of 22, three chefs, two security guards. Yeah, it's a race tomorrow. There is a huge, big television screen in there. It fills the whole thing. And you can go in there and, and take a seat. It's free. You can watch the racing on the big screen. This guy Tower over there is supposed, that's supposed to represent a red sock. Red socks are lucky for New Zealand. We have a red sock campaign for the America's Cup. Though. But to me, that's Prada's colours. I don't know. <laughs> Then right behind the Rigetti, you can just see the signage around the, uh, the restaurant part of up there. It cost them $86,000 to put that signage on the side of the building. I wouldn't go on the outside of that thing for a million bucks in my back pocket.